We will begin the meeting with an acknowledgement. Community Care Durham acknowledges the lands and the peoples of the Mississauga of Scugog Island First Nation. We are thankful to be welcomed on these lands in friendship. The lands are situated on, are covered under the Williams Treaties and are the traditional territory of the Mississauga, a branch of the great Anishinaabe Nation. These lands remain home to a number of Indigenous nations and people. We acknowledge this land out of respect for the Indigenous nations who have cared for this land from before the arrival of the settler peoples until this day. We remember the history of these lands has been tainted by poor treatment and lack of friendship with the First Nations who call them home. We all have different shared history to reflect on and each of us is affected by this history in different ways. Our past defines our present, but if we move forward as friends and allies, then it does not have to define our future. Thank you, Leah. I'm pleased to welcome guests and their care partners, volunteers, members of board, staff, friends, and a number of dignitaries, including Federal Member of Parliament, Ryan Turnbull, representing Federal Member of Parliament, Mark Holland, Michael Radoslav, Provincial Member of the Legislature, Lauren Cole, Mayor of Clarington, Adrian Foster, Mayor of Scugog, Bobby Drew, and Clarington Councillor, Ron Hooper. Welcome all. Before we get going, there are a few housekeeping items to cover. On behalf of Community Care Durham, I would like to let you know that this AGM is being recorded and will be posted on our website. If you do not wish to have your image included in this recording, please turn off your video. Thank you to everyone for reviewing the documents ahead of time, including the how to vote via Zoom and telephone, which is posted on our website. During the meeting, we will be presenting a number of motions for your consideration, and we'll be calling for those in favor and those opposed. A reminder that only CCD board members, volunteers and clients are eligible to vote. If you have a Windows or Mac computer, you can vote on a motion by clicking on the reactions button, then click raise hand. To vote by telephone, press star nine to raise your hand. If you're using an iOS or Android device, you can vote on a motion by clicking on the more button and click on raised hand. Please note that in all cases, the host will be lowering your hands. If you have any questions during the meeting, please use the chat feature to communicate with our host. And at this time, we are honored to play the national anthem. Again, I would like to thank all the elected officials who have joined us this evening. Your support, both municipally, provincially, and federally, is so important as we carry out our mission. In preparation for tonight's meeting, we asked our elected officials to provide greetings via video, and we're happy to play those now. 
A huge congratulations to Community Care Durham on 45 years of serving our community, whether or not it's Meals on Wheels or mental health support or transportation, so many other ways. Uh, we know that Community Care Durham is always there to support others uh, and is such a rock in our community. Thank you for everything you do and congratulations. Hi, this is Colin Carey, Member of Parliament for Oshawa. I want to take this opportunity to welcome everyone to this year's AGM for Community Care Durham. I want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for all the hard work, especially these last couple of years with this virus. I tell you, it's been so difficult for so many people and you make a real difference in their lives. So thank you for continuing to help people in our community remain in their home, work with mental health issues, food security, your volunteers make a huge difference in the lives of people right here in Durham Region. Have a wonderful evening. As the Member of Parliament for Durham, I want to applaud and thank the staff and volunteers at Community Care Durham. For 45 years, you've been the backbone of our community, providing meals, assisting people in their home, helping the elderly, helping the vulnerable for 45 years. You bring the spirit of community to Durham. The last two years with the COVID-19 pandemic really called for you to step up in extraordinary ways. And I know you have. So on behalf of our community as member of parliament, I wanna salute your great work and thank the entire team. Congratulations on 45 years. Hello everyone, I am Lauren Cole, the member of provincial parliament for Whitby and chief government of Whitby. I'm so pleased to extend my best wishes to Community Care Durham on the occasion of your 45th annual general meeting. We all know how important connection and community is to the quality of life and the work that Community Care Durham does on a daily basis to support clients with a broad range of community supports and services. A big thank you and congratulations to Community Care Durham staff and all of its volunteers not just on this occasion, but every single day. Please know that your incredible efforts and stewardship truly make a difference and improves the lives of everyone you help, both in the town of Whitby and across the region of Durham. Please have a great evening and thank you for all you do. Hi, I'm John Henry, Chair of Durham Region. Thank you to Community Care Durham for allowing me to be part of your 45th annual general meeting and thank you for the important work you do in our community. Your work to support adults and their caregivers who have needs related to aging, physical health, and mental health is vital to the long-term care and health of our community. By supporting our residents' independence, you are directly improving their health and quality of life. Please enjoy the meeting, and again, thank you for all that you do. Hello, everyone. On behalf of myself and the members of council in the city of Pickering, I want to bring greetings and congratulations and appreciation to Community Care Durham and to all of the volunteers for the work that you're doing in our community, everything from Meals on Wheels to in-home respite. You show you care, we know it's needed, and I want you to know it's appreciated. Thanks to each and every one and to the organization as a whole, and God bless. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sean Collier, Mayor of the Town of Ajax. Everyone knows that no matter our age, there's no place like home. That's why the life-changing at-home services administered by Community Care Durham make them such a valuable part of our community. Congratulations to everyone at CCD on your tremendous work and thank you for supporting the people of Ajax and of Durham Region. Hello, I'm Mayor Don Mitchell. On behalf of members of council, I wanna congratulate all of the hardworking staff and dedicated volunteers at Community Care Durham for all that you have done for the residents of Whitby and Durham over the past 45 years. I recently participated in your Meals on Wheels program and saw firsthand the difference that makes. And that's just one of the many services you deliver that allows so many to continue to live independently and well. You truly do support people and strengthen community. So thank you again and all my best for the next 45 years. 
Hi, it's Mayor Dan Carter for the great city of Oshawa. I couldn't believe it when I found out 45 years you've been serving the community. Congratulations, Community Care. You're doing a tremendous job in our community. And imagine the lives that you've impacted, the people you've changed, the people that you've lifted up, and those that you've served for 45 years. On behalf of my city, I just want to say thank you very much for your service. Congratulations on 45 amazing years. Hi folks, I'm Adrian Foster. I'm the mayor of the municipality of Clarington. I've got 30 seconds to thank you, thank Community Care Durham for all of the amazing things they do. And when I say they, I mean you, the volunteers, the staff, everyone that brings the programs that are so desperately needed to our communities. We couldn't do this without you. So thank you from all of council and from our community for all that you do. Thank you. Turning now to our business meeting, I hereby declare that the meeting is properly constituted and I call the meeting to order. All clients and volunteers of Community Care Durham are eligible to make a motion and to vote. A copy of the minutes of the 44th Annual General Meeting of Community Care Durham held on June 28, 2021 is included in the material posted on our website. We did not receive any questions or concerns regarding those minutes. May I have a motion that the minutes of the meeting held on June 28, 2021 be approved. I move the motion. Thank you. A sec may I have a seconder? Yes, it's Lisa McCoy, I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Counted. Opposed? The motion is carried. Thank you. The annual report contains the president's and CEO's report for the fiscal year ended March 31st, 2022. I would like to ask James Malosh, CEO of Community Care Durham, to say a few words about some of the highlights in this report. Good evening, David. Good evening, friends. Good evening, clients, volunteers, past, current board members, and dignitaries. And I'm seeing some familiar faces on the screen, and I wish all of you a uh, good evening, and thank you for coming. Um, I'm going to review a couple of the accomplishments over this past year, as well as what we are looking for in the year ahead. Next slide, please. We have four elements of our strategic plan. I'll go through each of them for brevity. The first is about enhancing the client quality of life. Um, in last year, uh, it's amazing, and I still can't believe it sometimes, uh, we delivered 154,000 meals across the region. And that's a combination of frozen and hot meals, as well as our meals at our food community food box. Uh, this is not possible without the tireless work of our staff and most importantly, our volunteers. It's an incredible achievement, and it really is a cornerstone of this community. During this past year, we increased our client capacity in our out-of-day programming, transitioning from online into in-person. We met the increasing food security demands in our Meals on Wheels program, and our assisted living services, those are our personal support staff and house cleaners going into people's homes, uh, maintained its service uh, unabated during the entire pandemic. Next slide. What to look for in 2022? Well, we want to bring you all back. <laughs> we want to return to in-person service for all of our programs. We're redesigning our model of care coordination so that each client has one point of contact in the organization. Now, if you receive multiple services from us, you may have multiple contact points. We want to improve your care experience, your service experience here with a single point of contact for all of your needs. And we're moving with our quality and improvement plans, focusing on medication and falls prevention uh, to make Community Care Durham a safe place to work and a safe place to receive care. Next slide. Our second pillar of our strategic aim is investing in our people. Obviously, one of the most important duties we all have, the responsibility of care, is keeping people safe 
And we did that through our, our efforts during the pandemic um, with an ever-changing set of COVID protocols. We implemented a new payroll and human resources system that didn't go without its hiccups, um, but certainly was, is an improvement from where we were. And we continue to invest in training and education for staff despite managing COVID and budget restraints. I can't think of many organizations who are faced to cut on these issues because of the budget issues that they are enduring. And I believe at Community Care Durham, we need to keep investing in our staff and in our volunteers. The result of that uh, is that 94% of our clients surveyed that they had a very high level of confidence in our service. And that is because of the commitment of our staff and our volunteers. The next slide. So what do we look for in 2022? Continued investments in our education to improve our skills and our resiliency. We've heard and we've talked about it, we've listened, um, paying attention to the mental health of our, of our volunteers and our staff is going to be critically important as we all rebound from two years of very difficult times. We'll continue to lobby our government officials for sustainable financial assistance to close the pay equity gap with other health sectors. And we'll continue to ensure that CCD is a safe and inclusive workspace and work, workspace, including celebrating our inclusivity inclusivity and our diversity. Next slide. This is a new pillar for us, but it's really what been what we've been doing for 45 years is championing healthy communities. We continue to lead and collaborate with our partners in the Ontario Health Team, including leading, leading innovations and representing the community support services sector at all the leadership tables. We've expanded our COPE mental health workshops and brought back in-person groups we had 17,000 group participants last year and over 3,000 group sessions. Uh, simply, it's an incredible achievement by a small team and a dedicated group of volunteers. We provided over 13,000 hours of care for high intensity sports for seniors living at home through a partnership with our home and community agency and our local EMS service, helping people stay at home while they wait for long-term care. We've alleviated service barriers for clients for equipment and personal support, thereby helping Lake Ridge Health with its bed pressures. And we collaborated with the Durham Death Services to help provide training and transportation and purchase technology so that we could bring access to those who are home and hard of hearing. Next slide. What to look for in this area for next year is to con continue to collaborate with our Ontario Health Team partners with initiatives that enhance the integrated health and social services for high-risk clients, starting with downtown Oshawa. We're going to increase our food security in Durham by expanding our community food box program and increasing our Meals and Wheels deliveries. And we'll continue to advocate for our clients and for greater diversity and inclusion in our community and ecological sustainability. Next slide. Building for our future. As one, uh, one government representative said, congratulations on your 45 years, good luck on your next 45, and we intend to. Uh, we've adopted, adopted a report that looks at a future state model that begins a modernization initiative so we can deliver more service at lower cost to make ourselves more sustainable. We've developed a central intake process through a CareDub technology, streamlining our referral and onboarding process of clients. We've created an internal intranet to help keep employees engaged and up to date on our initiatives. And we received an Ontario Trillium Foundation grant for Healthy Community Resilient Communities Fund, allowing us to rebuild from the impacts of COVID-19. And, and again, I wanted to thank uh, to MPP Lauren Cove for his support on that, that uh, grant award. Our next slide. So what to look for in 2022? We're going, to re, we're going to launch our capital campaign for the community hub renovations here at 20 Sunray Street, Whitby. We'll advance our modernization initiatives and we'll address increasing demands for our services through fundraising efforts, such as Spread the Joy campaign and Kilometers for CCD. And we're moving to a new client information system called AliaCare to enhance our care, create efficiencies and improve care coordination with the broader health system. Next slide. 
And I just want to thank everyone again for tuning in tonight and for all of you who contributed to a very successful year at Community Care Durham. Thanks, David. Thank you, James. We did not receive any questions or concerns regarding this report. May I have a motion that the annual report for 2021-2022 be approved? I'll move the motion. Thank you. May I have a seconder? I'll second. All in favor? Counted. Opposed? The motion is carried. The Board of Directors accept responsibility for the financial statements of the organization. A summary of the audited financial statements for the fiscal year ended March 31st, 2022 is included on page eight of the annual report. A copy of the detailed statements, including the auditor's report, is available on the website. We did not receive any questions or concerns regarding this report. So may I have a motion that the audited financial statements for the fiscal year ended March 31st, 2022 be approved. I'll make that motion. May I have a seconder? David, it's Matt Satter. I'd be happy to second the motion. Thank you. All in favor? Counted. Thank you. The motion is carried. Thank you. I, I would like to, at this time, to also thank Dale Tinkham and the staff at Tinkham LLP, our auditors, for all their hard work on CCD's behalf. The Board of Directors of Community Care Durham is committed to executing its strategic plan to further its mission and vision. Given the growing demands on governance, including the need to regenerate the board and its committees, a review of the roles, responsibilities, and terms of office for board directors was completed. Furthermore, two new committees were formally introduced to further the governance agenda. The document containing our proposed changes was posted to the website along with the other documents for this meeting. We did not receive any questions or concerns regarding this report. Therefore, I ask for a member to make a motion to ratify the changes to bylaw number one. Catherine? I move the motion. May I have a seconder? I will second. Thank you. All in favor? Counted. Opposed? The motion is carried. Thank you. I now call on Kath, Caitlin Ostropolik, Chair of the Recruitment and Development Committee to present the committee's report. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Uh, as per bylaw number one, Community Care Durham's Board of Directors consists of 13 members. A profile of the directors to be elected was posted on the website, and pictures of the board members will now be shown on the screen when their names are called. David Sudbury, Lisa McCoy, Jennifer Cree, Helen Brenner, Lori Hagen, Jean-Claude Legault, Ferio Leung, May Lewers, Margaret Osborne, Alina Popa, Malvina Ram, Matt Snyder, and myself, Caitlin Ostropolik. I hereby ask for a motion to approve the slate of candidates as directors to hold office until the next annual general meeting. Caitlin, I move the motion. May I have a seconder? Mm 
I'll second the motion. It's Lori Hagan. Thank you. All in favor? Counted. Opposed? The motion is carried. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your new board of directors for the fiscal year 2022-2023. Our next subject is retiring directors. We have three directors retiring from the board this year, namely Keith Turnay, Marsha Eli, and Charlotte Empringham. I would like to invite David to say a few words about their outstanding commitments. Thank you, Caitlin. It's my pleasure to say a few words about these three outstanding directors who are stepping down from the board to enjoy a well-deserved retirement. Many of you already know of these board members. They've served CCD for many years and have helped guide the organization as, as it's grown over the years. Keith started with CCD 14 years ago. Prior to joining the board, he spent most of his working career as a manager in children's mental health services and served on several boards, including the Child and Youth Workers Advisory Board at Mohawk College Participation House of Waterloo Region and Community Care Access Center of Waterloo Region. As a past president of CCD's Board of Directors, he lives his life dedicated to CCD's mission of supporting people and strengthening community. Indeed, when his parents could no longer live on their own, he brought them into his own home where they remained for the rest of their lives. Everything they needed was at home, he said. Keith has never missed a board meeting during his time with us until the past year when he suffered some serious health issues. I won't get into the details, suffice to say, he was brought back to life five times. Despite that, he only missed two meetings before he was back with us. He's truly dedicated and has left an indelible impression on all of his colleagues. A great thank you, Keith, for your many years of service. Like Keith, Marsha Eli has been with the board for quite some time, 18 years to be exact. She too has made a lasting impression on CCD and has represented North Durham proudly. Marsha came to CCD with a background in home and community care, having worked as a nurse at the Toronto Community Care Access Center. She said she knows the healthcare system is not a friendly place to navigate, but CCD helps clients understand and is always there to lend a hand. During Marsha's time as a board member, she's witnessed CCD's growth from a small grassroots organization to a significant player in the healthcare field. And it's her hard work that has helped us to get there. Thank you, Marsha, for all you've done. It's been a great pleasure working with you. Charlotte is also a proud member of North Durham and joined the CCD CCD Board of Directors 16 years ago in 2006. Charlotte's background in education, having worked as both a teacher and administrator with the Toronto District School Board. She became involved with Community Care Durham as a member of the Brock Local Advisory Committee and served as secretary for the board for most of her term. She could always be counted on to speak up about issues in the North and brought a wealth of knowledge to the board table. When Charlotte was not working on behalf of CCD, she spent her time as a warden and lay reader in her church and was a proud recipient of the Order of the Diocese of Toronto. She volunteers at Lakeview Manor, acts and directs with the Beaverton Town Hall players, loves to play bridge, golf, and lawn bowling. Phew. On behalf of not only myself, but the whole board, it was a pleasure working with you, Charlotte. Please join me in congratulating Keith, Marsha, and Charlotte for their many years of service and outstanding commitment to Community Care Durham. Before we move on to the remaining agenda items for this evening, let's conclude the business part of the meeting. May I have a mover for the meeting to be adjourned?
I see Jennifer raising her hand. Sorry. Okay. Thank, thank you, Jennifer. May I have a seconder? I'll second. Thank you, Keith. All in favor? Counted. Opposed? The motion is carried. Thank you. Moving to our next agenda item of the evening, we're excited to recognize some amazing individuals who have been supporting Community Care Durham over the past year. I would like to call on Community Hub Manager, Lori Houston, to present the Lifetime Membership Award for the Pickering Ajax Community Hub. The Lifetime Membership Award is to recognize one's contributions over the whole of their volunteer career with Community Care Durham. Hello, I'm Lori Houston, and I'm a manager of the Pickering Hub. It is our pleasure to nominate Jackie as this year's recipient of the Lifetime Membership Award. Jackie began volunteering for Community Care Durham in 2017 as a transportation driver. Jackie is committed to helping our clients and makes herself available to drive them to their appointments. Jackie's pleasant manner and warm heart makes her favorite amongst our clients who often ask for her by name. Jackie provides safe and enjoyable transportation and takes her role as a volunteer to heart and does whatever she can to help our clients. Jackie is deserving recipient of the Lifetime Membership Award. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jackie Benwell and I'm a volunteer driver for Community Care Durham. I am honored to receive the Lifetime Membership Award as I love giving back to the community. I enjoy meeting and supporting many people and listening to their stories. I will continue driving all those that need me as long as I can. Thank you. Congratulations, Jacqueline, and much thanks for your service. Next, I would like to call upon Service Coordinator Diane Carner to present the Lifetime Membership Award for the Whitby Oshawa Community Hub. The Lifetime Achievement Award is presented annually to recognize volunteers whose contribution to community care Durham has been outstanding and noteworthy. This year, we have nominated Robert Dingman from the Oshawa office. Robert's been a volunteer with community care Durham for the last 21 years. Bob has offered his time and passion to delivering meals on wheels every week and has continued to do so during COVID. He's dedicated, reliable, and cares about the clients. As a volunteer, he has demonstrated time and again a commitment to helping in the community. We feel that all our clients, staff, and the City of Oshawa have benefited greatly from your generosity of time, and we thank you for your continued commitment. On behalf of everyone at Community Care Durham, we want to thank you, Bob, for your commitment to our clients over the past 21 years. Thank you. Hello, my name is Bob Dingman. I have been delivering Meals on Wheels every Wednesday for 23 years. When I first retired in year 2000, I decided I would like to do some volunteer work. At the time, I had a friend who was delivering Meals on Wheels. I went with him a couple of times and the rest is history. I have met and become friends with many very nice, interesting people over the years, including some who are well known in the city of Oshawa. My 23 years doing Meals on Wheels has been very rewarding to me and hopefully my clients have appreciated my friendship and service. Thank you, Community Care Durham, for this lifetime membership award. I am honored. Congratulations, Robert, and thank you for your many years of service. I would now like to call upon service coordinator Jillian Housem to present the Lifetime Membership Award for the North Durham Community Hub, Scugog. It's an honor to present Ab Fulford with the Lifetime Membership Award for Community Care Durham. Ab always goes above and beyond for his clients. His friendly personality and gift to gab makes the clients feel at ease. When I would be in a jam for a drive, I would call Ab and he would always make the time for the client and never let me down. I can't thank Ab enough for all the years of service with Community Care Durham. You truly are the best of the best. 
Congratulations, Zab, and thank you so very much. Thank you for the Lifetime Membership Award. The staff give amazing support to the volunteers and clients alike. I enjoyed meeting the people that I drove in Ajax, Pickering, Clarington, and Skugog over the years. We'd swap a story or share a tale. Hopefully this helped them take their mind off their daily challenges. Thanks again. Congratulations, App, and thank you for your many years of service. Next, I would like to call upon retiring service coordinator, Lee Bolingbrook, to present the Lifetime Membership Award for the North Durham Community Hub, Uxbridge. It's my privilege this evening to present the Community Care Durham Lifetime Membership Award to Catherine Ewing of Uxbridge. Catherine has been an invaluable member of the CCD team since 2012. There's nowhere she will not drive to. She's always there for the clients of Uxbridge with her caring ways. Through COVID, her, her dedication never wavered. Congratulations, Catherine, on being CCD Uxbridge's Lifetime Membership Award recipient for 2022. You deserve it. Hi, my name is Catherine Ewing. Thank you for selecting me for the Lifetime Membership Award. One of the best decisions I made after retiring and moving to Uxbridge was, to jo was joining the Uxbridge Community Care team. Driving clients to their appointments has given me a sense of purpose and a strong connection to my community. Over the years, I have met so many interesting clients while we were passing the time during our drives. I've heard many stories and learned of their life experiences, and this has often welcome, a welcome distraction to pass the time before appointments. I like to think I have gone the extra mile for the clients and shown we care very much about their safety and welfare. Thank you very much for this Lifetime Membership Award. Thank you, Catherine, and thank you for your service. I'm constantly amazed that our, our uh, volunteers, they're the lifeblood of our organization. And without them, we couldn't accomplish all that we do. So again, a big thank you. Also to Lee for your, your all your years of service with Community Care Durham. Enjoy your retirement. Mm -hmm. I would now like to call on Director Catherine Ostropolik to present the Lifetime Membership Awards for the Board of Directors. Thank you, David. It's my pleasure to present the first Lifetime Membership Award to retiring director, Marsha Eli. I would like to echo the sentiments David made earlier and congratulate Marsha on her many years uh, with CCD. Her experience and fierce advocacy for the home and community care sector has made CCD what it is today. Unfortunately, Marsha was not able to join us this evening, so I would like to call upon director Jennifer Cree to accept this award on her behalf. Thank you, Caitlin. On behalf of Marsha, I am honored to accept this award. Marsha and I have worked on the board together for many years and are longtime friends. I will now share some remarks we have received from Marsha directly in response to this nomination. Thank you for this honor. However, it really has been my great pleasure to have had the opportunity to volunteer community Community Care Durham for the last 18 years. Over the years, I've seen a great deal of positive change. However, what hasn't changed is the commitment of the board members to provide the best possible service, services to our community. The absolute dedication of our staff to ensure CCD supports you, our clients, whenever you call, whatever you call home. The numerous volunteers who provide amazing supports to all of us and the huge appreciation expressed by our clients. Our community is large and, di and diverse one, and we are indeed fortunate to have such a progressive yet caring organization to care for us when we need it. I have enjoyed every moment of the last 18 years. It has been a great ride. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer, and thank you again to Marsha. The next Lifetime Membership Award I would like to present is to retiring director Charlotte Embringham. Like Marsha, I congratulate Charlotte on her many years with CCD. She has shown immense dedication and support in all her roles, especially as secretary to the board of directors. Unfortunately, Charlotte was also unable to join us this evening. So I am honored to accept this award on her behalf and share some of her remarks now. Charlotte says, thank you Community Care Durham for this prestigious award. 
since moving permanently to Beaverton in 2001. My work with community care led from volunteer to member in our local advisory council to becoming a member of the board of directors. My long term on the board was a learning curve from day one. Mm. Most specifically, I learned what a fine organization it is, what true leadership is, and what teamwork is. I regret that I cannot attend tonight's AGM, but I feel confident that the organization's future is in good hands, given its current CEO, board of directors, and senior team. I'll continue to volunteer when I'm able. Thank you again. Congratulations to this year's Lifetime Membership Award recipients. Community Care Durham could not provide service to its clients without your dedication. I will now turn it back to you, David. Thank you, Caitlin. Congratulations, Marsha and Charlotte, as you join Keith and other board members who are already lifetime members of, our, of the organization. Our next award of the night is the Lynn Morrill Award. Each year, the Lynn Morrill Award is given to honor a volunteer who has shown outstanding commitment to the COPE mental health program. I would like to call upon COPE Program Manager Laura Andrichola to present this award. I am honored to present the 2022 Lynn Morale Award to our volunteer, Kathleen Smith. Kathleen's been a volunteer with the COPE Program since 2014, and since then she's been a consistent and reliable support, not only for our clients, but also for our team. Throughout the pandemic, she really stepped it up, providing individual support calls to our isolated individuals, and she also took on another group without hesitation. Kathleen also has quite the passion for psychoeducation because she understands that knowledge equals empowerment for our clients and works hard to provide that information in group. So this year's choice was an easy one. We thank you, Kathleen, for all of your support, and we look forward to many more years supporting our community together. Thank you very much for the recognition. And I'd like to thank the COPE team for all the support they've given over the years when I have volunteered. I've enjoyed the volunteering very much and will continue to do so in the future. Congratulations to Kathleen on this award and thank you for all your support to the COPE Mental Health Program. The next award is the Brent Farr Award. This award was established to pay tribute to Brett Farr, former executive director of Community Care Durham, and his contribution to our community and its more vulnerable people. Community Care Durham's board of directors has approved this award to be available on an annual basis to a deserving student based on merit with a focus on community service. I would now like to call on Brent to present the Brent Farr Award. Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to announce Alyssa Best as the recipient of the 2022 Brent Farr Award. Alyssa sounds like a wonderful young person. Uh, she has been consistently on the honor roll in both her grade school and her secondary school. She has also been the recipient of a number of community awards, including the Community Service Award twice. Alyssa is commencing her university career in September at Trent University in the teacher education stream where she will be uh, doing a double major in both education and history. Alyssa, we wish you the very best in your educational endeavors and we congratulate you on this award. Thank you, good evening. Hi everyone. I just wanna thank the Board of Community Care Durham directors um, and just anyone who sits on that board for um, granting me this award. It's very important for my education and what will come of me in the future. Uh, thank you for helping me and my future self in this effort for my university and thank you to my mom who showed me what this was and offered my to nominate me and help, offered help in the process. Thank you. Congratulations, Alicia, on this award and best of luck in your future studies. Our next award of the night is a new organizational award brought forward by the Board of Directors. The Gail Rickard Memorial Award honors Gail Rickard, who began her journey with CCD in 1977, serving in many executive positions and for two terms on the Board of Directors, including the position of Board President. While Gail excelled in her leadership roles at CCD, she easily transferred that passion and energy to frontline volunteering. 
This award will annually recognize an outstanding community champion for their work with Community Care Durham and their charitable work and positive influence within the local and greater community. Recipients of this award exemplify Community Care Durham's broad social purpose of supporting people and strengthening community. Please join me in welcoming Gail's husband, Don, to present this award. Hello, it is with a lot of mixed emotion that I'm going to be presenting the Gail Rickard Memorial Award at Community Care Durham's annual general meeting. When Gail passed away last August, Alan and Karen and their families thought it very fitting that Community Care be one of the recipients of the immemorial donations. Gail had spent over 40 years as a volunteer being involved with Community Care on the board of directors, executive positions, but also delivered Meals on Wheels rode the minibus to help people get to lunch out programs, lead sing songs, and visit one-on-one -on -one with others. Gail was one of those who never asked what the community could do for her, but what she could do for the community. It is an honor for me with my family to present the Gail Rickard Memorial Award to a person who is a true CCD champion involved extensively in the Whitby area, delivering Meals on Wheels since 2010, and building a strong rapport with many clients advocating for their needs. Janet Britton is dedicated to her clients, and that dedication is so admirably and falls in line with Community Care's mission of supporting people while strengthening the community. Congratulations, Janet. I've always considered volunteering as a reward in itself, and the satisfaction I get from helping others. So when I got the phone call regarding the award, I was really overwhelmed. So in saying that, I would like to thank Taylor Yoroda for nominating me, and also for the poor people in that she's, whose arms she twisted to get them to agree with her. Thank you so much for this award. It really is overwhelming. Thank you. Congratulations, Janet, for being the inaugural recipient of this award, and thank you for your service. Again, may I say how proud we are as a board of directors for all of our volunteers and staff. The next award of the night is the Corporate Leadership Award. This award was established to reward an exemplary local business that has provided to community care Durham either a financial contribution or a donation of time by its employees, either inside or outside working hours, or a combination of both, or has otherwise distinguished itself in support of Community Care Durham's mission, vision, and or strategic priorities. I would like to call on Lead Capital Development, Melissa Rudin, to present this award. Hello, everyone. My name is Melissa Rudin, and I'm the Lead of Community Capital Development here at Community Care Durham. It is my pleasure to present the Corporate Leadership Award. This award recognizes a local business that has supported Community Care Durham with a financial donation or a donation of time by its employees, or has otherwise distinguished itself in support of our vision and strategic priorities. I am honored to present this year's Corporate Leadership Award to the team at Whitby Oshawa Honda. Congratulations. Hello, everyone. I'm John Biglow, the dealer partner at Whitby Oshawa Honda. And with me is our community outreach team. We want to first thank Melissa Rudan for nominating us for the Corporate Leadership Award. We are truly honored to receive this. We decided to partner with Community Care Durham because their vision aligned with ours. Whitby Oshawa Honda's mission is to better our community by supporting all those in need in Durham Region. We see the community care van servicing local needs, and we appreciate the tireless efforts of all their staff and the roles they play. We look forward to a long-term partnership with Community Care Durham, and we're very happy to announce that we will once again be supporting them in 2022. From all of us to all of you, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Congratulations to Whitby Oshawa Honda on this award. We look forward to our continued partnership with you and supporting the region of Durham. 
I would now like to invite James to present the Community Service Recognition Award. James. Thank you, David. I'm pleased to present the final award of this evening, the Community Service Recognition Award. This award was established to recognize an exemplary not-for-profit organization that has provided to Community Care Durham either a financial contribution, a donation of time by its members, or has otherwise distinguished itself in support of Community Care Durham's mission, vision, or strategic priorities. We are very honored today to pre present this award to the Durham Regional Health Department. During the past year, the Health Department had worked diligently keeping residents and organizations abreast of the fluctuating waves of COVID-19 that we all experience. They educated us, they provided vaccination clinics across Durham Region, they encouraged residents to get their first, second, and third doses of the vaccine. They also supported Community Care Durham to help provide us with our own pop-up vaccination clinic. COVID-19 presented significant challenges and they met every challenge head on and continue to do so now. It's appropriate that we also recognize them during these times when we feel like we're coming out of normal because often public health gets forgotten during times of non-crisis. So it's our pleasure to present the Durham Regional Health Department with the Community Services Recognition Award. So on behalf of the Durham Region Health Department and my entire team, I want to thank Community Care Durham for this recognition and award. The pandemic response and the vaccine rollout has been extraordinary and unprecedented, and we couldn't have done it without uh, the invaluable help of all of our regional partners and community partners, including Community Care Durham. Uh, I'm pleased that we have been able to provide assistance to CCD and its uh, clients and I'm confident that my entire team uh, will be pleased with this recognition and award. Many thanks. Back to you, David. Thanks, James. On behalf of the Board of Directors, I would like to extend my sincere congratulation and appreciation for all of our award recipients this evening. Without you, CCD would not be in the position it is today. Please join me in congratulating all of our award recipients this evening on their achievements. Thank you. As we move to our last agenda item for this evening, I will ask James to introduce our keynote speaker. James. Thanks again, David. It is my pleasure to introduce Cynthia Davis, otherwise known as Cindy, President and CEO of Lake Ridge Health. Cynthia became President and CEO at Lake Ridge Health in January 2021. She brings a wealth of nursing and leadership experience obtained through a rich career in various healthcare settings in Canada and the United States. Following her clinical roles in Ontario hospitals, Cynthia returned to her home province of Newfoundland to assume leadership roles in Western Health one of the four regional health authorities responsible for providing a broad continuum of integrated health services, from community to hospital to long-term care, to a very diverse population. She served eight years as the Vice President of Patient Services and Chief, Chief Nursing Officer, and she went on to be appointed the President and Chief Executive Officer. I've observed firsthand Cynthia's passion for patient-centered care which she fosters through engagement and partnerships. As a sponsoring agency to the Durham Ontario Health Team, Cindy and her team have been championing integrated health solutions that improve the health and well being of patients and the community we all live in. Cindy is a graduate of Western Regional Health School of Nursing, and she has a diploma and, and a Bachelor of Science degree from, Dahal, from Nursing from Dalhousie University and a Master of Science from the University of Toronto. She is a member of many provincial and national healthcare engagement groups and a member of the Canadian College of Health Leaders. I'm very pleased that she's agreed to join us this evening to speak about the Ontario Health Teams and managing population health. Welcome, Cindy. Thank you so much and thank you for the introduction. It's actually my pleasure to be here tonight. Um, as I saw, sat and listened to uh, your 45 years of success and the journey you've been on, I'm, I'm humbled uh, by the work that you do and the volunteers that you have. So congratulations. 
Um, I want to say that when I started at Lake Ridge Health uh, in 2021, James was one of the first people to reach out to me. Um, and I've enjoyed our connection and our collaboration as we start to think about health and community health and what that means for the entire Durham region. Um, what you have been able to provide in terms of leadership and what your organization has been able to do to support the entire Durham region is something that you should be thanked and commended for. So on behalf of Lake Ridge Health, I certainly want to do that. What I want to do is just talk about the journey that we're on and then what does that journey mean in terms of the work that you do and that collectively we need to do together. <clears throat> so it's through collaboration um, that we're really leading on this journey and we talk about it at Lake Ridge Health, you know, our vision is one system best health and we say well really what does that mean. Well, it means that we all work for the people in our communities um, and that we all have roles to play in that. And one of the things that James shared with you is where I came from. I have spent the last 14 years in Newfoundland and Labrador. And what's interesting is that um, the sense that community is really important wherever you go. And what I've seen tonight in your AGM and certainly our own last night is that people are committed to each other and they wanna do what they can to help each other. And as we engaged on the strategic plan for Lake Ridge Health, one of the things over 14,000 people throughout Durham region were surveyed. What they clearly said to us is we want things to be better. We, we want a system that cares for us um, at the right time, at the most appropriate place, and many times that is not in hospital. And we acknowledge that. We're only a small component of this care delivery system. And in our organization, what we've really been trying to talk about is health and what does it mean from a health perspective? So we're poised to grow, you know, I'm sure that you know as well as we do, how are we going to manage this explosion of growth throughout the Durham region? Population expected to double, uh, and with that comes an aging population, but it also comes an opportunity in terms of the new people that move into our communities and how we can actually work together to leverage all the resources we have to meet the needs. And so to talk a bit about Lake Ridge Health in terms of where we're expanding, and it really is to meet the growth that's happening throughout the Durham region. Um, you may have heard that we are, um, we are requesting uh, support for a new regional hospital um, that we're proposing could potentially be sited in Whitby. We're looking at expanded outpatient and ambulatory care services as James talked about and others, you know, the uh, Durham OHT and our work with our community partners is really important. And we understand that we need to work together and that we need to leverage everything that we can to this growing population. Uh, we've opened a brand new long-term care home that actually started in December. Um, sorry, it actually opened uh, in March, but what was interesting about this one is we went from the time the shovel went in the ground until we opened that facility was 13 months. Um, and now we're caring for people uh, at that new long term care facility 320 beds uh, located in Ajax Pickering. We've also um, expanded our coverage around mental health and addiction services through our merger with Durham. Uh, mental health, community services. And throughout the pandemic, what we've done is just understood how much could actually be supported through virtual care. And, and as James talked about in the work that you've done, um, you know, virtual care does have a place in our care delivery system. What we will, I think, post pandemic sort out is what does that balance look like for us uh, in terms of in-person and virtual care. Next slide. So, you know, as I listened to your, your presentations tonight and what you were talking about, and, and I said I was humbled and I truly was, when I heard the numbers, they're pretty staggering. 154,000 meals, uh, 13,228 hours. 
And I can say with confidence that every bit of service that you provide actually protects the acute care system so that when people arrive at our doorstep, we actually have the capacity to care for them in that acute moment. But what we've been promoting at Lake Ridge and certainly what we want to talk about is the reach out into the community and really what does that mean for us? And I just want to talk about this story about Raham, who's a 48-year-old Oshawa resident who's, uh, you know, what has sometimes been labeled as a frequent flyer. So somebody that frequently shows up at our emergency department at scattering times throughout the evenings and weekends and days of the week. Um, but then what we want to do is really challenge people to step back from that and to say, how did this person arrive at our doorstep? Well, he's shown up because he has severe asthma. And he continues uh, to present to our emergency department because he doesn't have a, a primary care provider. And so for us, when we are challenging each other in terms of understanding the populations we serve, then it's really why. Why does this individual not have uh, a family doctor or a community clinic that they can go to? Well, he works and doesn't have the ability to go during the day and then the services aren't always available in the evening time. So he started smoking recently and that's contributing to his asthma. So, but why is he smoking more? Well, he's really stressed about his job, uh, about the pandemic and about being able to provide an income and support his family. And then, well, what does that mean in terms of where he lives? Well, he lives in a downtown housing unit that unfortunately has issues with mold. He's stressed about that for his own health, for his family's health. And then, well, why can't he move from that situation? Well, he has limited education and opportunity to actually continue his education to get a better job. And so when we think about population health, that piece of it is really important for us. It's important for us to understand where people come from, how they arrive at our doorstep. And so on the emergency side, if we only looked at how often this individual came to our emergency department and didn't look beyond the circumstances where they live, their education, their social economics, um, we are not going to be successful as a community. We need to do more. And the solution is not building bigger hospitals and more hospitals. It is actually the strength lies in the community and the services that you've shared with us tonight during your AGM. Next slide. So what we talk about at Lake Ridge Health and what, and what we're continuing to share even internally with our staff and then externally is that what we do only contributes to a small portion of the person's health journey. 75% of people's health outcomes are unrelated to what we provide. What we do in acute care hospital is really, really important. When you have a heart attack or a stroke or cancer, or you're coming to deliver your first child, you need to show up at your community hospital and you need to be cared for rapidly and get, get back on your feet and then back to your primary resident. But what we know is that there are so many determinants of health and what influences that, you know, we often talk about, you know, genetics, genetics is a small component, 15%, where you live is 10%. But what we do in hospitals contributes to such a small window of that. And what we want to promote at Lake Ridge Health is, you know, we want to be here when you need us. But we want to make sure that we make all those connections to community agencies like Community Care Durham that we've heard about tonight. Next slide. And so this is what we say, you know, health care alone is not enough to keep our population healthy. You know, when I again, the numbers that you talked about were staggering, you know, seniors in their homes, people that you support in terms of mental health and shut-ins and all of those things are so important to us. And collaboration, both inside and outside the walls of our organization is really gonna help us be successful as a community. 
We're only one provider in the Durham region. Um, we do have a large organization, but what we also know is that we need to leverage everything in our community, all of the resources that we have to really support people. And as I said before, what the community told us as we did our survey um, to create the strategic plan is not only did they want it, they expected that we would start to do this work. Next slide. So I wanna talk about the success story with Community Care Durham, uh, you know, the home first story. Um, we have been involved in home first for a number of years. But the work that you do in Community Care Durham and how you've actually been able to support early discharges and discharge avoidance um, and maintaining people in their home really does demonstrate the success not only for your community, but also for the people and the clients that you're serving. And ultimately, it's interesting because we talk about the work that you do protects so much of the other systems and allows us to function when people need it. So I just wanna say a huge thank you to your support for the Home First program um, and the, and the um, clients that have been referred and supported from Lake Ridge Health. Next slide. So this is just, you know, we heard about how many people responded and I was glad to see that you gave an award to public health. Um, this was one of the things that we did in collaboration around the communities of inclusion. Um, so what we know is that um, there are marginalized and vulnerable populations, and those have been mostly affected and greatly affected by this pandemic to the extent that's much broader than the general population. And we worked with our community partners, um, and you can see them here, to really think about how we could do outreach in the community to support vaccination clinics. Um, and also those populations that we knew were struggling to get to the regular clinics that we're offering. But also on the acute care side, what we saw presenting to our organization, both for admissions to hospital was staggering in terms of the differences between the populations and the most vulnerable populations. Um, and I remember in the early days when we talked about vaccination, because of the nature of vac the vaccine that was available, uh, hospitals did take on a lead role in this. I mean, normally it's not the work of hospitals, it's the work of public health. But I can say that we rolled up our sleeves really quickly because we understood the more people we got vaccinated, um, we were in a better position to actually protect the acute care services. And it's with those underpinnings that we really wanna think about our future. Next slide. And um, this is one that, you know, we're really excited about in terms of our work with Community Care Durham and our OHT partners. As we're looking to the future, we've been selected to submit a proposal to look at modernization of home and community supports. And um, with James and others, we've looked at the opportunity to start in downtown Oshawa at one of the senior buildings that we know has high rates of um, healthcare usage. And also that there's an opportunity for us to work across agencies and across communities uh, to try and figure out how we can wrap services around this population and how successful we can to keep them healthy and well in their homes. So we're really hopeful that this one is going to be supported um, with uh, the proposal that we've submitted. But fundamentally, what I would say is whether it's, it's supported or not through formal funding, it's one of the things that we have to start doing more of. We have to work in collaboration and we have to work collectively to keep people healthy and safe in the places that they live. So I look forward to this one. And hopefully, James, you'll be able to share the success of it uh, at your next AGM. Next slide. So we're really looking for that integrated model of care. And, and what does that mean? Um, it doesn't mean that the hospital is going to do everything and that Lake Ridge Health System will do everything. Um, what it means is that we have the ability to help the community and uh, to leverage and make those connections 
with agencies like Community Care Durham, and that we know will be stronger as a community and be able to provide so much more to people that live throughout the Durham region um, through the connections that we have. And so if I think back again to that story that we shared to you about Raheem's story and how we arrived at that situation, for us at Lake Ridge, we need to think beyond the walls of our emergency department. We have to in order to be successful. And it's really through that integration and partnership that we will see the success that we need for individuals like him and others who avail of all of our services. Next slide. So what, what I wanted to share in closing is how important our relationship is with Community Care Durham. It is through this work and the work that you do um, and the work that we do um, that we will actually be able to provide the best services to people when they need it most. The most high performing functioning systems that are out there that think about that continuum of care, work in collaboration and partnership. Also, when we think about the journey that people are on, uh, the health journey, it's much more than the hospital-based journey. It is about understanding the populations we serve. Uh, and as I listen to your stories tonight and the stories of your volunteers, you're the people that are on the ground every day, managing and supporting people in their homes. And on behalf of Lake Ridge Health, as I said earlier, I just wanna extend a huge thank you to you. I look forward to our continued collaboration as we build the best communities possible throughout the Durham region. Thank you, James, and I'll turn it back to you. Hi, James, I believe there's time for a few questions. If anybody does have any questions, um, please raise your hand and we'll invite you to unmute and you can ask your question directly to Cynthia. I have a question for you, Cynthia. Um, I'll be this person that gets the ball rolling. Um, you know, this evening we had, um, you know, obviously the AGM is focused on the work of, of governance and of, of the board. Um, and I'm very fortunate to have board members who've also worked in the acute care system uh, to support our mission. When you came from uh, Newfoundland and Labrador to Lake Ridge Health and started to work on this new strategic plan with your board and your management team, did you find there was a wide acceptance of that or was there a culture change that you had to kind of promote within the organization to think beyond the walls? And where do you think you stand today as a, as a board and organization about thinking broadly in the way that you think and, and just some thoughts about how that change is necessary and um, still a challenge? So, you know, I worked in Ontario before um, and I was here for 13 years. And as, as you talked about, I went back to my home province um, and what was interesting, it was the first time actually that I had worked in an integrated system because uh, when I had left there, it, it very much was single hospital based. It was that division of acute care, long term care and community based services. Um, one of the things that it appealed to me was actually the ability to come to a region like Durham in Ontario to really start to create those changes. Um, our board had developed uh, the strategic plan for Lake Ridge Health in 2019. I think we're a bit delayed because, actually I know we're delayed because of COVID, um, but they had an ambitious plan to begin with. And when I think about Durham region um, and then the plan that our board has, we're really well positioned, I think beyond any other place in Ontario, maybe Niagara, um, you know, as the single healthcare provider on the acute care services, with the exception of Ontario Shores, you know, Lake Reach Health is, is the provider. And so what we talk about is we want to be the provider of choice, not just the provider of geography. 
And then it's interesting because I went to the long-term care commission and they said, well, you know, what does it, what does it mean? And when you tried to look at, um, you know, services across the continuum. And I said, to be quite honest, the heavy lifting was on the acute care side. Like that's what people saw as important to their communities, whether or not they had a hospital and they had acute care services. But I can say having worked 14 years in a system that's broader than that, we will only be successful with the strength of community agencies like yours. Um, and that we need to work in collaboration and partnership. Would I believe that we have work to do? Absolutely. I believe our board is there. I know they are. They're supporting this. Are our staff there? We're on the journey together. Um, you know, we've made some significant changes internally to look at health system executives in leadership roles um, around, around program clusters and services. And it's with that intention that we hope that they will be reaching out broadly in the community to understand how people arrive at our doorsteps and then when they're discharged, where they go. Um, so we're early on these journeys. I'm really hopeful. I think people are really excited about it. Uh, but again, it is not our intention to do this. It is about leveraging everything that already exists and figuring out where those gaps are so we can advocate together. There is a question in the chat box that I'll read out. Um, and it says, how can local community members help Lake Ridge Health and Community Care Durham achieve the goals of, of an integrated system? And I know that you have a patient advisory committee and we have a community family advisory committee. And we both benefit from very active community members on our Durham OHT. Um, can you talk a little bit about that role of community engagement and, and patient and client engagement, and how it's transforming what you do at, at uh, Lake Ridge Health and what you see it doing across the, the system? So what we say fundamentally is we're about people. We're about the people that uh, come to us at a time of need uh, that entrust, you know, uh, their lives to us as we can help them. So whether they're patients, clients, or residents. And then the other side of that is people, the people that work in our system, and then the volunteers that we have. Um, the voice of the community is so important. The voice of uh, the lived experience, the voice of people that have been users of our system, whether they're yours or ours, is really important for us to hear whether it's good or bad, in order for us to figure out how we can actually improve. I think engagement will be one of those cornerstones of success for us in terms of moving forward. You talked about the OHT. I think the OHT, you know, the Durham OHT is a model of success. So much has happened. I know that Kirsten Burgermaster's here with us tonight from Lake Ridge, listening to your AGM. And, you know, what we've seen is that so much can be achieved when we work in partnership and around that table, and you would know, um, we have the voice of community representatives there. At the end of the day, what, what we talk about and, and I do is that we're in service to other people. Um, that's why we're here. Our job is about giving service. Um, and we need to make sure that through those community partnerships that we're actually responding to what people need from us. So it is really important, James. Absolutely. I don't see any other questions. Maybe there's any last call for a question to Cindy while we have her this evening. If there's no questions, again, I just I want to extend my appreciation and thanks to you um, and to your board and to your volunteers. Um, you know, you're such a vital, important piece of this community puzzle. Um, and uh, I look forward to working with you in, in the coming years and months as we start to tackle so many of the pieces uh, that need to be done for our communities. It's a likewise feeling, and thank you very much for joining us tonight. Cynthia. Yes, th thank you very much, uh, Cynthia, for your your presentation tonight. It was very, very um, remarkable to me be because it started at the right place. Our population growth that we're going to experience in Durham, 
both both not only in urban Durham, uh, you know, Pickering, Ajax, Whitby, Oshawa, but also in rural Durham, uh, with uh, more seniors moving uh, to uh, retirement residents in the north. Um, so it puts a lot of pressure on the system. And uh, I was very struck by how, how much in common we have in terms of our vision for the future. And I can assure you that James is like a bulldog with a bone when it comes to our board meetings, when he talks about integrated model of care and collaboration across the spectrum of healthcare uh, and the importance of, of that work. And you have in our board a uh, strong commitment that this is the direction that we think is uh, right for, for our communities and the people we support. Uh, and as you say, it, it's very, individual based and centered based on providing uh, both patients and people living at home with the right care at the right time in the right place. So again, thank you so much. And uh, we appreciate uh, you spending time with us tonight to talk about uh, this is a very, very important subject. That wraps up our agenda for the evening. I wanna thank you all for attending CCD's 45th annual general meeting. Your support of Community Care Durham is greatly appreciated. I am so proud of Community Care Durham and all of our volunteers, staff, partners, and community supporters. I wanna express on behalf of the board how excited we are about the future and how much we appreciate all your support. I declare the meeting adjourned. Thank you everyone and good night.